be some sort of global exercise. I also, to be fair, let me say here that uh, these rankings are global exercises. For example, Freedom House's latest global report on political rights and civil liberties covers developments in 195 countries and 15 territories. WDEM claims to produce the largest global data set on democracy involving 202 countries from 19, uh, 1789 to 2020. I just know one thing. We don't need to fight a fight that ain't fair. So to discuss whether this is fair or not, with us today is a distinguished panel of guests. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Salvatore Babonis, sociologist and professor at Sydney University. He's authored the acclaimed book, The New Authoritarianism. Ha! Good evening, namaste. Welcome. I love what you're wearing. <laughs> Betty, please. I'd also like to invite Anand Ranganathan, well-known socio-political speaker, a genetic engineer by profession, winner of the Kuwaiti Jawaharlal Nehru Centenary Scholarship for Cambridge, <laughs> United Kingdom. His columns regularly appear in First Post, DNA and News Laundry. He is also consulting editor of Swarajya. Over to you. And this one looks to be like a blockbuster, hai na? Ek bar fir se man kar raha aap se over to you. Thanks very much. Uh, 45 minutes, yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure to be interacting with uh, Professor Salvatore. Um, and he, his Twitter feed, I don't know if you've uh, been following him over the last week, even before that. Uh, it's an absolute uh, uh, wonderful thing to be uh, looking at his tweets, the videos that he's putting. He's almost on a... Nehruvian discovery of India, <laughs> if not a Bharat Jodo Yatra. And the, uh, but I, I suppose you can see the similarities with Jawaharlal Nehru. Um, but I hope he's restricted all those similarities to uh, just the cap. <laughs> I, I you don't thought, know any mountain battles, do you? I, I, I thought you were a nationalist. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we, we, I'm, I'm going to throw open uh, the floor to a lot of audience questions very quickly because... Um, because you haven't prepared the session. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because because we, we, uh, he seems to be a, a wonderful person, and he's riled up the Chauthi fails and commies and urban axles, you know. So the enemy of an enemy is a friend. So uh, uh, I, I'm uh, not going to grill him that I, much. I, I have to be clear. I'm not an enemy of anybody. I've never used any just of those friend. words uh, you just, just mentioned. Just like your sense of humor. Uh, I I'm have just, never used um, any of those words, and I, and I won't. Absolutely. Um, uh, before urban we, axles, please come. Towards the stage, I'd love to meet you, and, and I'm happy to hug every one of you. Maybe once you start your party, you can invite a lot of urban axles <laughs> to vote for you. Um, so let, let's get down to serious business. Um, the debate is about democracy and the rankings, decoding sure. the rankings. And uh, let me begin straight off by saying that uh, these rankings are absolute rubbish. Only fools and jackfruits and copper-plated jackasses would believe in them. Uh, they are as much believable as uh, you would say that Taliban worked for women empowerment, or Hafiz Saeed was an apostle for peace and nonviolence. Um, but the fact is, now that we've got this thing out of the way, um, we, as logical and rational people, and of, not of course. demented commies, um, have to talk about democracy and in a very serious way because it's not that everything is right. I mean, by, by which I mean not that everything is correct in our country and in democracies. So let's have the next 10, 15 odd minutes discussing about what is right and what is wrong. Not about the rankings because both of us don't believe in those, uh, those rankings. But uh, to begin with, I'd like you, Professor, to set the frame up and then I'll come and uh, you know, talk about what I believe should be the frame. So to begin with, uh, two questions. One, uh, what in your opinion is democracy? And number two, why do you very briefly believe that these rankings are not worth the paper they're written on? Uh, the American humorist uh, and journalist H.L. Mencken said a little over 100 years ago, 
said that democracy is the theory that the people know what they want and deserve to get it good and hard. Now, he was no fan of democracy. He was saying that democracy is getting the worst of what you want and what you vote for. But in a way, that's a reasonable definition. It's not for us as commentators, as intellectuals, as university professors, to decide whether or not the voters have made the right decision. In a democracy, the voters are sovereign. Democracy means being able to look your leader in the eye and say, you're fired. And if you have that authority, then you live in a democracy. Right. So you believe India is a democracy? India? Yeah. Of course India is a democracy. Right. That's a, yes, to get that's that a out of the question. Look, e even for the varieties of democracy institute, the question is not, is India a democracy? The question is, what is the quality Correct. of India's that's, that's what democracy? I mean. yeah. And that's where all of the rankings and the criticisms come in. It's very difficult to criticize India as an electoral democracy. The question is always, does it have all of the larger requisites, the broader requisites that are necessary in order to ensure the proper functioning of a quality democracy? That's where the qualitative analyses, where the subjective analyses can be used to undermine the objective fact that if you look for a country that has three or four decades history of free and fair elections with routine transfer of power between parties, you can't find a single one under 10 or $20,000 GDP per capita except India. Right. Uh, and the, the other question of why do you very briefly believe that these so-called democracy rankings are deeply flawed? Each of the democracy rankings has serious problems. Uh, I'll have a paper coming out next week on March 1st about the varieties of democracy institute rankings. It has very serious methodological problems in the way it's been constructed. So for example, it has a sub-index called free and fair elections. On that sub-index, there are eight measures of free and fair elections. On those eight measures collectively, Hong Kong scores 20 places higher than India for free and fair elections. Now, that's easy to point out and say that's, it, that's ridiculous. Of course we can't take this seriously. But from a social science standpoint, it's important to look at the methodological reasons why. So the questionnaire asks, does the country have violence at elections? Well, in Hong Kong there's no violence at elections because it's a one-party police state. Is there any vote buying? Well, in Hong Kong there's no vote buying. There's only one party you can vote for. Does the Electoral Commission have full authority to manage the election? Well, in Hong Kong, it's perfect authority, absolute authority over a single party system. Okay. And the examples go on like that. Right. So the problems are deeply embedded in the methodology of the rankings, not in any ill will towards India, and I always want to emphasize that, but there are serious methodological flaws in the rankings when you can find that a one-party dictatorship actually has freer and fairer elections in India because the way you've set up the metrics predetermines that conclusion. Nowhere do they ask, is there actual competition in the election? Right. That's so not one of the metrics. Sure, I mean, I got what you said. Let, let's, let's kind of play around with this theme a little bit. Let's, let's, let's uh, uh, raise the bar a little uh, rather than comparing us to Hong Kong. Uh, as both of us actually believe uh, that these democracy rankings that come out from the Nordic countries or the West are deeply flawed when it comes to India. No, no, but they're, they're deeply flawed. That's what I said. Yeah. Not when it comes to India. Oh, per se. Right. They're, they're, they're deeply sure. flawed. They have serious methodological shortcomings. Right, right, right. Where they so fail if, to measure actual competition in the real world. Sure, sure. Is it possible to unseat the party in power? Right. That so, should be the uh, number one question of a democracy rank. But 30 seconds, 30 seconds. This is important. Okay. 30 seconds. They, they, as, they long you, as long as you pay me 10 rupees for <laughs> using that phrase. <laughs> they don't actually ask, is the election competitive? So a country that has the election won 95 to 5 can get the same ranking as one where it's 51-49. That's my first use. I don't know if you've seen the OTT Farsi, but I need to make sure. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Especially because you're wearing that cap, you might be. 
Legit. Thank you. No, but if we, if we were to say a perfect democracy is 10, let's say, ranking, where would you fit India? Be Look, honest. I, I can't tell you India's ranking as a democracy. Of course, Indian democracy has challenges. Every democracy does. In my own experience, in the research I've been doing the past three to five years, most of the challenges facing Indian democracy are challenges of poverty, and they're challenges of history, not challenges of actual That's such an democracy. answer that a politician would give. I mean, honestly, he's, Look, he's already formed his party, you, you, and his party symbol is Mysore Park. <laughs> no, but on, you mean to say you haven't really thought about... On a scale of 10, how much would you? No, I, look, I can't tell you. I, 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 I would say five. Every, you don't have I an answer to that. I think you're lowballing India. I think you're lowballing India. Uh, look, everything in the world right. depends so on GDP Right. So I'm So now I'm going to put you on the thing. So you think it's seven? I if think five that, is lowballing. Uh, let, let me let me benchmark it instead to what kind of Australia? Why don't you benchmark Australia I, on I 10? I don't think I, I don't think India has quite the same quality of democracy when it comes to its organizational operation as Australia does. Right. Okay. In Australia, polling is essentially flawless. Mm -hmm. There are no issues with electoral registers. There are no problems with uh, candidate symbols. There, Same is the case okay. with India as well. Oh, but there are no problems. There yeah. are no objections. Everything just runs smoothly. Now, does that make Australia a better democracy? I, I'm not sure, because those are the conventional measures of democracy. A better measure of democracy is can people get the policies they want? Yeah. In Australia, the answer is typically no. Mm -hmm. In Australia, the political establishment has one basically agreed set of policies, and no matter who you vote for, you're not really going to change that consensus. In, Aust in India, by contrast, that's what I said at the beginning, democracy is the theory that people know what they want and deserve to get it, right. whether so, it's good for them or not. Excellent. Be before we move further, let me put my frame. So I might say India yeah. actually has a higher quality democracy okay. than Australia. If by democracy we mean, do elections have consequences? Yeah. Can the people get what they want? And can the people fire their leaders? Right. And in India, the clear answer to both of those at the national level and at the state level is yes and yes. Yeah, excellent. So uh, this is how I put my frame. I think India is a democracy. I would, on a scale of 10, uh, I, would, I would give it 5. But I also believe that India is a banana republic. Now let me qualify that. And I, I say this from three points of view. Number one, in no other country is the majority population so actively discriminated against constitutionally and legally. Now, that can only happen in a banana republic. Uh, here is how, Professor, I, 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 uh, I describe democracy, uh, much along the lines of how you have. But essentially, in order to grade democracy, you look at two great institutions of democracy. One is you would look at the way elections happen in, a, in any country, so election commission. And the other is the judiciary. Because judiciary, according to me, should be above politicians and the whole political process, legislature, and of course it isn't. But the fact is Supreme Court. So essentially, if you look at the two, two most important indicators of democracy, the Supreme Court of India and the Election Commission, I would say by and large, barring a few faults that are traditional or they crop up every now and then, they are independent. Election Commission is independent, and the Supreme Court is independent. It is, you, you have a lot of cases where I'll come to why I call this country a banana republic, and I talked about just one issue yesterday, which is that you had the ethnic cleansing and genocide of the majority population in Kashmir 30 years ago, and 700,000 people are displaced. In no other large economy you would find the majority population being refugees in their own country. But India is that case where Kashmiri Hindus have been discriminated against. Not only that, the Supreme Court refuses to open cases of persecution of Kashmiri Hindus, saying, quote, too much time has elapsed. Now, is that democracy? But and, Anand, I, I have to disagree with you on yeah. each of these points. Democracy is can you vote for things and get them done. Mm -hmm. Now, 
international, liberal internationalists want to accrue to that definition of democracy all of their own personal pet politics, their own personal pet projects. It strikes me that you're doing the same. You just have a different set of pet peeves from what internationalists, liberal internationalists have. A democracy means can you vote and get what you want? The people voted to abrogate Article 370, and you got an abrogation of Article 370. Yeah. The plight of the pandits will be taken up when the people of India want to take up the plight of the pandits. And until that becomes a major election issue in India, it's not going to be a major issue for the parties because India is a democracy. When it comes to independence of institutions, no, I'm sorry, so, uh, in America, courts are highly politicized. We elect our judges, elect our judges, no, no collegium system. We elect our judges in many states in the United so States. So what you're saying, I'm just extending the definition of, so I mean, if you were to restrict the definition of democracy as just electoral, then what you're saying, of course, makes sense. Electoral but as I said, and everything needed the to election commission it. is independent. And, uh, you know, uh, elections happen in this country fairly independently in uh, throughout the length and breadth of this country, state elections and central elections. But what I'm talking about is you keep on broadening the definition of democ democracy. And here I will include more and more things. But I just gave you one example where the Supreme Court of India doesn't want to reopen cases of murder, rape, genocide, because it feels too much time has elapsed. Now, that in may any be democracy... A bad thing. I That's don't what know. I mean. But you can't say that every bad policy means there's no democracy. Yeah. Democracy means elections. It means having the necessary freedoms to support a meaningful choice. Freedom of the press, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom to contest elections. If you have those basic freedoms, you have a democracy. Now, if you say my democracy produces policies I don't like, so freedom I'm sorry. Of, let, let's come to freedom of speech, for example. Freedom of speech. So in India we don't have essentially freedom of speech because it is subject to something. That's why I say it's a banana republic and there are so many examples. Not just the center or the Modi government not exercising or giving freedom of speech, uh, but state governments as well. I mean, there was a case two weeks ago where a chemistry professor from Jadavpur University had passed on or shared through an email a cartoon of Mamata Banerjee. He was arrested on that day. It took him 11 years to be acquitted by the court. And now, these, those are the people who actually mm -hmm. are tweeting democracy rankings when it comes and saying India is no longer democratic. And these Mamata are problems Banerjee. of poverty. These are problems of living in a country where there is a history of communal violence. Of course, India has narrower limits on what is allowable speech because India, just to be frank, has a history of people killing each other over these things so that we don't have in Australia, that we don't are, have in the United States. That's a bit patronizing. I'm sorry, I mean, you're but saying, it's true. You're saying that Indians don't deserve the extent of freedom of speech that oh, Australia does. I'm saying Indians, through their institutions, I think have made a sensible and reasonable decision to put limits on freedom of speech that we don't accept in the United States. Right, so now, according to you, now the question let me is, finish, let me finish. Look, it's, it's, heat, it's heating seconds, up, which seconds, is good. Ten seconds. Ten seconds, all right. Give me this. <laughs> he, is, he, is a, he is really going to be a politician. All right. There we go. Freedom yeah. of speech is limited, sure. Yeah, so as I'm saying, talk to the person who's arrested and who was acquitted after 11 years. His life has been ruined. Are you telling me that being an Indian, he needed less of freedom of speech than an Australian or an American? Now, let me give you another example. I completely condemn what happened to Pawan Khera. You had a huge police presence. He made a, a terrible comment against the, uh, the prime minister. He, he kind of made, even though some may say that it was a jocular comment, uh, uh, you know, the middle name being uh, Gautam Das instead of his uh, prime minister's father's name. And the next thing you know, uh, you have like 100 cops on the tarmac preventing him from going because someone filed an FIR in Assam, Guwahati. All those people, and I condemn that. But the funny thing is all those people who were condemning it, saying it is the uh, coming of the emergency, were actually celebrating when the Punjab police had whisked Tejinder Bagga away who's a politician from the BJP, yeah. just because he said, uh, he used a, f a word that Mahua Moitra used in the parliament. So, I mean, I can use parliamentary language now. Uh, he said, saw harami marenge tab ek kejriwal paida hoga. Now, I don't know if that's correct or not, but 
the the fact of no it's not no don't don't quote me on that uh the fact of the matter is that a case was registered in punjab for what he said and the punjab police came and actually took him from his home he was en route to god knows uh, what would have happened to him tortured in punjab uh, haryana police came in and kind of freed him the fact of the matter is all those people who were crying the death of democracy when pawan khera was being arrested were celebrating the arrest of uh tejender bag i can give you another example so uh, many of those when article 370 was abrogated india turned off the internet in srinagar right widely criticized around the world yeah. as a restriction on freedom of speech what did yeah. dr jay shankar said yeah. he said we accept some restrictions in order to save many lives the problem Now, is it's relative I'm it's subjective a, i'm an american i come from a liberal democracy where freedom of speech is absolutely fundamental where if you want to wave a nazi flag on a, in front of a jewish synagogue you can do that it's your basic right as an american we have that culture if indians and it's up to you if indians have decided that your political speech has to be more civil no i'm putting you on the spot it's not up to us i'm saying is your this decision better than what our state has I, decided i'm not going to say one is better than worse Come i'm on. going to say one is what americans want you being so I political am, i mean i am not going to i am not going to criticize indian democracy for making decisions that indians believe are sensible as long well, I am, as but, long no you can criticize it as a policy of course, yeah i can criticize american limit, democracy and i can it, criticize indian democracy but it doesn't limit democracy now it doesn't limit democracy the, the reason why long, i believe it's oh, a banana finish, republic I'll, I'll, I'll finish sense it doesn't limit I, democracy i i need 10 more it, it doesn't ten limit more. democracy as long as it doesn't prevent the full expression of political vote in campaigns if you can still campaign for office that's just so subjective that's it's oh, almost no. draconian if you say because what you, and patronizing and no, i take no, serious no. offense to that as an indian let's use you are words. saying in america and australia we have unfettered freedom of speech and expression but you guys that, this is suited for you that so does not, you should not do this you should not do not, that that is not uh 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 yes that is not what makes india a democracy so or not in a sense america is not a democracy because of freedom of speech america is a democracy because it's elections you just said one of the elements of what defines a democracy is, is freedom speech, of speech sufficient speech to conduct right. political campaigns is so what's necessary so in that for extent you would democracy. rate america higher than india no, no no i would rate india freer i'm sorry america freer than india there we go freer than india freer yes. is not better I'm free higher freer is own, not higher on the index i'm free to own and carry a gun in america Yes. That's a basic civil right in America is if I want to own a firearm I can own a firearm and if I want to carry it I can carry it. Now that's not a basic freedom in India. It's a basic freedom in America. America is freer than India. There is basic freedom in India to carry it, firearms. There that is. That doesn't make it more of a democracy. Haven't you attended any marriages in Bihar? <laughs> No but let 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 me let me let me define again because maybe I wasn't very clear yeah why we are a banana republic here hindus have are prevented from legally going to the court in demanding their temples back temples that have been destroyed and mosques built over it through an act of parliament through an act of your parliament Now, that your parliament can reverse and your parliament has chosen not, not to reverse exactly it. exactly That's this a this is a place where for a year India. for a year you can blockade highways five highways that connects delhi the capital of india sure. you can blockade them for a year and still the supreme court says we are not going to remove those blockades is this not a banana republic when you can you talk of press freedom sure now in chatisgarh a man complained uh, a journalist complained of power cuts he was charged with sedition you had konakonam power power uh, nuclear power plant activists in one day 8000 of them were arrested under charges of sedition by the congress the bjp has done the same i mean in in gujarat uh, uh, an editor uh, mr patel uh, dhawal uh, patel not the dhawal patel i know of the bjp person but uh, he 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 criticized the handling covid handling of the gujarat chief minister he was charged with sedition and arrested for 15 days when do the questions come So it's it's a free willing discussion I mean oh, okay, I I I gauge the quality of your answers so ask you so I'm not going to ask you many more questions so no just joking just joking the point of the matter is 
The point is, the India rankings, may be the rankings a may be republic. whatever they may be. Whoever is coming That's up with those rankings, there. But we have to but define a, a better, a better place to live in for Indians, for Americans, for Australians. And I'm afraid, Professor, you not, you are, you want to make Australia and America a better place for Australians and Americans to live in. But it is being, we are just friends, so please, please don't take it in a very antagonistic <laughs> way. But I'm just saying, we deserve much better. We and deserve much better on a lot of fronts. And you may. That, and let, let me talk about the other oh, thing. We talk of majoritarianism for uh, Article 370 for 70 give, years. Give me my 30 seconds. Take a break. What? Okay. Give, give me 10 rupees give, more. Give, you can't. <laughs> give me my 30 or, seconds. Take a break from the monologue. Look, everything you're saying may be true. Yeah. Don't convince me. Convince them. Convince the voters. Yes. India is a democracy. If it has policies that you don't like, you can change them. That's what the heart of a democracy is. You can't say, I don't like this policy, so India is not a democracy. The protesters are blocking the streets, so India is not a democracy. The farmers are not getting You're their money, the so India is not out. a democracy. You're taking the easy way out. You just now talked about freedom of was, speech. A journalist you said was it's part of democracy. A journalist was beat up in some town. Now, India is not a democracy. No, professor, constitutionally, That's not the question. constitutionally, we have been restrained. Our, we've been shackled mm -hmm. constitutionally. And if this government were to change the constitution, People would say this is the death of democracy. I, I mean, irony. The, this government would like to remove, or if it likes to remove, or if it wants to remove the shackles from the constitution that, that are, you know, misguiding us okay. into believing we are a democracy, people will accuse of uh, Modi of actually uh, being a dictator, being trying to remove things from the constitution that ought to be removed. Look, there are two now, that is the hallmark problems. of democracy. There are two serious problems with Indian democracy. Would you like to hear them? Yes, very quickly, because you've just given me a, you just given me a tenor. I mean, I won't. There are two serious problems with Indian democracy. One you've, you've already gotten to, which is the extraordinary reach of the Supreme Court. The idea that the Supreme Court can appoint its own future members through the collegium system and that it can set aside lawfully enacted constitutional amendments through the basic structure doctrine, uh, that is unprecedented in the world. And I think that, that you really have to see it may be a good thing. I can't tell you whether it's good or bad for the Supreme Court to have such powers. I can tell you that it is undemocratic for the Supreme Court to have such powers. What would be more democratic is for the Supreme Court to be beholden to the electorate either directly or indirectly via your elected representatives. First, the first problem. So now you're grading Second, democracy, right? Oh, because you're it's grading not, it. I'm saying that is not First, it was freedom of speech. Uh, but then it was clear. collegium system, which is logical. No, I'm agreeing with you. It's not democratic because you can't so, vote on it. Now, okay. The second thing it's not democratic, so there are two major problems. The second is the lack of reapportionment in India's Lok Sabha since 1971. That lack of reapportionment is profoundly undemocratic. Democracy means one person, one vote. And India no longer has that systematically. People who are poorer, people who are more Muslim in the north of India tend to have fewer votes than people in the south of India. That may be appropriate. You may think it's a good policy, but it's certainly not democratic. So what people I who find are more, troubling... What? People who are more up north? The, north? the entire north of India is underrepresented in the Lok Sabha because of the freezing of reapportionment since 1971. Now, those are two things that are undemocratic. Now, what I find troubling, as someone who studies democracy, is that not a single one of the international democracy rankings cites these two clear transgressions of international de democratic norms when they criticize Indian no, democracy uh, not, not just because that. they uh, agree with these policies. Yeah, they the, refuse the other to thing, if you were to read some of the democracy rankings and the reports, they say before 2014, rarely, if ever, the governments were draconian in stifling funerals. So they, they completely ignore the 8,000 charges of sedition on activists and so many other things, stifling of press freedom and all that. So obviously, we're not discussing that. Incidentally, so I'm not in much disagreement with, with the professor and you know, his, his views, except except on a very lighter vein, who he calls as his 
guru and mentor. I don't know whether you know. The, the guru, as Professor calls him, was responsible for the quote-unquote coup story. And the mentor was the guy who punched someone in New York. These are the journalists who, for the professor, are... Oh, there are three. It's like... It's, uh, okay, it's, you're, now, you're leaving now, them now, out. Now, now my, my condemnation... Oh, we have to tell people... No, no, let me finish. You can't, you can't interrupt me as yet. You're, you're, not, you're not an anchor. So my, my condemning words will not do justice to the preposterousness of him choosing those two as his gurus and mentors. So I have to play something that will uh, be sufficiently uh, provide the outrage. Do you see that shriek? That shriek signifies our outrage at who you've chosen as your guru and mentor. Look, there, These are the people. There are, now they say, now one second, they, they say uh, journalism is the second oldest profession. These two people, journalists you've chosen as your guru and mentor, have made it the world's oldest profession. There are three people I've learned more it from. Is, now, when you, you say that people must... Not? Now, one second. No, oh, right. one, one second. You need to explain how on earth are you choosing such people who, who are responsible for spreading the most vicious lies and propaganda and fake news and setting false narratives over the last two decades as your gurus and mentors? Explain. Would you like an answer? Please. All right. There are three people who have taught me more than anybody else about Indian democracy. Shekhar Gupta, absolutely number one. Rajdeep Sardesai, number two. I just proved my point. You wanted to hear Karan Tapar, number three. <laughs> now it goes from bad to worse. Now, my now, God! If you now, if you like what I've been writing about Indian democracy for the past six months, you have to credit them, because I didn't learn it from Anand. I am now watching Anand on YouTube. It's quite unfortunate, but I'm starting to pick the up. The fact of the matter is, let, let us take a chemistry book. You wanted democracy, Vox Populi. But let's take a vote. But if how many of you think you, yep, that please. his three gurus are worthy of being called gurus? Sorry, let me rephrase that. How many of you think that professors, three gurus, Shekhar Gupta, Rajdeep Sardesai, and Karan Thapar, are not worthy of being called gurus? Raise your hands. All right. Second vote. Democracy quiet, is alive. Quiet, quiet. Second vote. I think let's end second there vote. and let's throw the second floor vote. open for some questions. Second vote. Professor. Second vote. Now, second, now one second. Please. Any, any, any questions? Seconds. Be quiet. Any second questions vote. for the, second for the pupil of You'll Shekhar Gupta and this, Rajdeep Sardesai? So we'll never get to questions. Second vote. How many of you like the education that I have received from these three gurus? Or... Should I change my message? Do you like the education I've received? No? Well, then I'll have to give up my compliments of Indian democracy and go back from 10 out of 10 to 5 out of 10. <laughs> no, but seriously, you need to... I mean, you, you might be a good pupil, but... I mean, you need to choose your gurus well. Let, let's... Uh, we have a couple of, couple of minutes, I think, to throw open the floor for questions for the pupil, if not the gurus. Anyone? Uh, hello. Yeah. Sir, you often say that your work is focused on the indexes and not particularly on India. So you've essentially shown the emperor has no clothes and the indexes are not worth the position we're giving them. So how do you see the way out of it? Do you suppose in future we'll have China coming up with a world index of something and Iran with something and that's the future you foresee? Or do you leave it open to young people to solve this problem? What do you see the solution? You're not going to change the indices. What you have to do is get more data out there. And I would like to see the government of India commission more real, solid survey data so that when we see allegations in the Western media about uh, negative views of Indian democracy, you can turn to hard survey data where people are systematically asked, do you feel that your voice is being heard? Do you feel that you're able to freely select your, your leaders? If there were hard survey data on India, that would be a fantastic counter-narrative to the subjective evaluations we currently see. Thank you. Uh, on a closing note, just 10 seconds, I think we as Indians, as Indians, deserve better. We will demand better critically, and we will not hate our government, we will not hate anyone, but we will always stand up for democratic values, freedom of speech, and we'd like to be as equal 
as any other citizen of any other country without being patronized to thank you so much thank you thank you thank you both of you it was such a, a live discussion i thought you uh, we have run out of time you could sort of I'm, main your I'm questions to them i'm coming straight out into the audience and i'm Same. happy to answer any questions without any uh, gatekeepers preventing it so the good time continues he's just he's going to come to you A round of applause for both the gentlemen there. I thought it was one hell of a discussion. Yeah. <laughs> All right, at Earth a Culture Fest, promoted by Z. Here comes the next session. Our next session for the day puts the spotlight on the magnificent Maratha Empire. Wow, and puts on Earth stage the book Mastery of Hindustan, 